We review about 4,500 cases a year. We have about 1,200 autopsies a year, and about 170 of them are homicide. Welcome, everyone. We are honored to kick off the program with Dr. Giuseppe Fazzari, who is criminal justice professor at Seton Hall University and documentary filmmaker of a film called Why They Kill. Uh, Joe, how are you doing? Good, good, Steve. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And Giuseppe, Giuseppe is uh, your born name, uh, but I can call you Joe, correct? Of course. Why They Kill is about what and why does it matter so much? Well, Why They Kill is based on the Pulitzer Prize winning author, uh, Richard Rhodes, uh, prolific author, has written, uh, you know, over 30 books. And this is one of his books that he wrote. So it's based on, it's based on his book by the same name, uh, Why They Kill, The Discoveries of a Maverick Criminologist. And that maverick criminologist is the renowned criminologist, uh, Dr. Lonnie Athens. So the book is about, Rhodes' book is about his life and his theory. Uh, and so my film uh, basically takes uh, the, uh, the, the theory, we touch upon the, the life of Dr. Athens, but we take his violinization theory and we put it in this new medium to provide it, to give it a wider audience to the market. Who are they? And then why do they kill? So they are, you know, the, 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 you know, the folks who, um, you know, play different communities, different societies, those folks who, you know, commit the murders, commit rape, the ag assault, um, you know, as you know, crime is bifurcated between violent crimes and property crimes. Um, not necessarily the folks who are, you know, committing the violent crimes and not also committing the property crimes, but the focus of the theory is those folks who are committing really those heinous crimes, those uh, you know, uh, violent crimes in our communities, in our society. Joe, I'm curious about this. Why is it important for us to know why people kill? I think it's critical because it's in that way that we can get this kind of uh, information out to, uh, and one of the main reasons I, I made the film is to take Dr. Atkinson's theory and kind of give it to the policymakers so they could ultimately use that information, use this theory that I think has great practical application to, to prevent crime. I'm curious about something, Joe, and I'm sure there are a multitude of reasons why people are violent in this way, why they kill, why they engage in violent crime. To what degree, Joe, does bullying play a part in all of this? Well, the bullying is, is an, interesting, uh, an interesting phenomenon. So bullying uh, would would fall into what Dr. Athens' first stage is, uh, which is the brutalization stage. That's not to say that everyone who's bullied, plenty of folks get bullied, plenty of folks don't go on to commit, you know, atrocities of murder, rape, and what have you. Um, but if they, it's that first stage, the brutalization stage, where bullying would fall into. Um, and then if they m subsequently move into uh, what the second stage is, is belligerent, belligerency, excuse me, then violent performance, then rulency. If they get through each and every one of these stages, at that point, you have a person who has uh, what he would refer to as this uh, unmitigated violent kind of self-image. Teachers, our schools, I mean, they're asked to do so much. They do so much more than teach, which is hard enough. Indeed. Are we expecting that educators, that our schools identify the potential for students, a 10, a 12-year-old, to be violent in this way? Well, not necessarily, but what the teachers can do, what principals can do, um, what superintendents can do in concert with other policymakers, local politicians, the police, the courts, it's a system, right? People coming together to um, bridge the gaps where we don't necessarily uh, are communicating enough with the potentiality of, you know, what's happening in the schools, what's happening with the particular child. Um, you know, Steve, as you know, I spent the, the greater part, the lion's share of my career, not in, in, in academics, but, you know, managing the trial courts here in New Jersey. Uh, and I often say that the, the issues, the problems within the criminal justice system are actually not in the criminal justice system. So I oftentimes would see those kind of, the genesis of those problems actually in the family courts. You see them in the domestic relations cases, you see them in the domestic violence, right? You'll see them in truancy, bullying, juvenile, uh, juvenile delinquency. It's only that when you're seeing that, you're really seeing it at the very beginning stages 
of problems that are potentially could materialize into bigger issues, bigger problems, where those same individuals then were seeing uh, in the criminal court, in the criminal courts, not all of them, certainly, but you'll see that the problem really starts uh, within those units. To what degree are judges, those involved in the judicial, judicial system, aware of and understand what you're saying right now, A and B, what the heck are they supposed to do other than uh, mete out justice, if you will, in terms of penalties and jail sentences, et cetera? I I, I think that the, the judges, uh, judges, attorneys, prosecutors in particular, those folks who have been exposed to Dr. Atkinson's theory, they immediately grasp it, right? And they actually see it sort of play out in our, in our professional setting. Uh, to the extent that the judges I worked with in Essex County, Union County, uh, and made the theory sort of uh, more accessible to them, to talk to them about it. Particularly those judges who are um, assigned to the dockets within the family court, they see this sort of playing out. And so why that's important is when you're, when you're seeing a child in that brutalization stage, potentially in that belligerency stage that Dr. Athens talks about, there should be available options. And there are available options that judges can at that point do to stem the issue of this child going further down that path. Now, with respect to the, that's not to say that we give up on the folks that are implicated in the criminal justice system and we find them in the criminal court. I think the benefit I think the benefit of his theory shows that with this empirical data, with empirical evidence, you could do risk assessment and you could tailor approaches that rather than just locking up every single person that comes to the court, you could take a measured tailored approach to what you do with this individual on the basis of how violent their fan of community is. P.S. Again, the pandemic mental health issues um, obviously complicates the research that uh, Dr. Uh, Fazari and his colleagues are doing, but uh, Dr. Excuse me, uh, Professor Giuseppe Fazari, criminal justice professor and documentary filmmaker of Why They Kill at Seton Hall um, University. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And P.S. Seton Hall is one of our higher ed partners. Joe, thank you. All the best. Thank you, Steve. It's been a pleasure. You got it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, Investors Bank, MD Advantage Insurance Company, PSE&G, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, Summit Health, and by Englewood Health. Promotional support provided by NJ.com and by R-O-I-N-J. PSENG is building the utility of the future. A future where people use less energy and it's cleaner, safer, and delivered more reliably than ever. We are modernizing to lower emissions, support more renewables and electric vehicles, and reduce outages. And we are empowering our customers. At PSENG, we are powering progress.